This is the Plain English Real Estate Show with your host, Rowena Patton, a show that focuses on the real estate market in terms you can easily understand. Call Rowena now. The number is 240-9962 or 1-800-570-9962. Now here's the English girl in the mountains, the agent that I would trust, Rowena Patton. Good morning and welcome to the show. This is Rowena Patton with Heather McCurry this morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are we all doing? She we is. survived. She, we did survive. Gosh. Uh, what did we survive? Which bit? Well, it's not raining and it was supposed to. We were supposed to get, what, two inches of rain, then three inches of rain. It went east. It Thank did. goodness. Poor Darian. Not, not great for, for people east, obviously. We have lots of friends on the coast. We're thinking about you all this morning. I know you... Listen in live. If you've got friends there and you want them to listen this morning, realestatenewsradio.com, realestatenewsradio.com, there is a link to listen live. You can listen on your phone. You can listen on your computer. You can listen on, oh, old-fashioned radio. You can listen in the car. Well, how do we listen these days, Randy? You've been a producer for how many years? And oh. a radio star and a, all kinds of things. <laughs> uh, primarily now, I has been. No, I, we can <laughs> listen in a multitude of ways. you got... A radio, you know, I remember when a transistor radio came about. What's one of those? It's about that size right there. <laughs> oh, no, it ain't. It's a big old box. I remember those things. I think my grandpa had one. Yes. Because <laughs> it had a got, transistor in it. You got a radio in your pocket now. Maybe that's our trivia question. Who can explain what a transistor is? <laughs> Do you know? Oh, yeah. You do? A transistor. It revolutionized electronics. You can store a lot of memory in a transistor. Oh. Yeah. Who knew? Oh, my gosh. I've got Google. Heather's <laughs> going to give us some trivia today in a, just a little bit here, too. Today, we are talking about inter interest rate busting. We're going to bust those interest rates. <laughs> okay. There's all kinds of ways to bust interest rates because, ooh, it's a little creepy right now. In fact... I'm buying a house. I know how stressful it is. I'm selling a house, too. I know how stressful that is. Trust me. Um, I've sold a lot in my time and bought a lot in my time. I've remodeled and flipped in, in my past life, 42 of them. Um, yeah, I'm wondering why I'm not white, why, why my hair isn't white. 42 <laughs> renovations, 42. Actually, my, my hair, truthfully, might be white, but we won't talk about that. Mm -hmm. I kind of avoided that. The great thing is... And men can do this too. You can go blonde when your hair's white and you get all like natural highlights as it's transitioning to gray. Because everyone goes gray. Yeah. yeah. Eventually. Yeah. Yeah. So men, when they're gray, can be platinum blonde actually quite easily. <laughs> <laughs> we could put all kinds of rinses on you, Randy. <laughs> We're gonna... uh, yeah, I did, I did go in a store and only in Asheville. Right? I went in a store um, about a week ago while I was waiting for, I was waiting for some x-rays to come out. So I'm just pottering around. And there was a lady there in her 70s who was trying on an outfit. And she said, there were little flowers on it. And she said, I think these purple flowers go with my hair. What do you think? And the girl behind me, really, and she had bright purple hair. It was so interesting. Only in Asheville, right? <laughs> kind of interesting. You do all kinds of things. We're going to have Cameron calling in to talk about all kinds of tactics from the lender's perspective on interest busting. But there's all kinds of other things you can do as well. Lots of things you can do as a seller. Lots of things you can do as a buyer. So you can bust those interest rates for your buyers because things have definitely slowed down a little bit out there. Here's the thing. I got into I got into real estate in 2007 when the market was going in the toilet. Now, if you were a buyer, I guess you might have thought it was really great, actually. Cause there were my trivia. Finally, the, the prices were There were my down. trivia. Oh, <laughs> when was the last market crash? Well, they happen every. Let me se start over. They happen to every seven to eleven years. It's normal. It's absolutely normal. Um, I hear, you know, we go out to listings. Heather comes out with me, and and um, people say, "Oh, I think it's going to be all right next year." It's not all right or not all right. It's just, it's just is. You know, it's it's the market. It's what the market does, and the usual cycle is seven to eleven years. So, in other words, if you're thinking about selling your house, and um, you can wait it out for seven to ten years. You'll be at the same price or most likely even more in seven to 10 years. That works for a lot of you. If you're in your 30s, if you're in your 40s, um, you, may, you know, maybe you've got kids in school for another seven years. That would be a good application of that. And you like the school district you're in and everything else, stay put. Yeah. Um, if you don't need to move, stay put. If you need to move, add those seven to 11 years, quit procrastinating. 
We all do that, right? Let's yeah. be honest. Yeah, we do. We procrastinate about all kinds of things. I'm thinking about giving you an answer. Um, How about, yeah, 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 you're procrastinating about yeah. giving an answer. We we all do. It, it might be things that are, are creepy, like going to the dentist. I'm sorry, all you dentists out there. And if you're a dentist who makes it not creepy, give us a call. 828-240-9962 and tell us how going to the dentist can be fun. <laughs> really? We Did I really hear, say that? We want to hear that. Yeah, really. How about going for a physical? That's not fun either. Do people procrastinate about that? We've got people sitting at home going, I get my physicals in every single time I'm supposed to. And then some people don't, right? This thing, what else do you procrastinate about? Well, people procrastinate on even taking their car to the doctor. Taking the car, yeah, that's me. <laughs> I mean, just getting service on your car. That's something that, you know, it's the longevity and the lifetime of your car. Um, <sighs> what else? Let's I'm see. about to give up my... How about just organizing certain things in your home or procrastinating just... That's a big one. Like my basement right now before I move again, I really need to go yeah. through stuff. There you go. All that stuff. All that stuff, that's a huge one we've like you wait about. until the last minute, and yeah. then you're sitting there, and you've sold your house, or yeah. and you have to move, or you're, or you're renting, and you have to move, and you're like, oh, I was supposed to have this all done. I've got a seller right now who's a, a very sprightly 70 who's saying, um, I'm saying, listen, wait it out. You could wait it out. This house suits you very well. And she's saying, I'll be 80 by the time I hit the peak again. I ain't moving at 80. I thought, well, that's reasonable. Okay, we'll support you through that, you know. Cameron, good morning. How are you? Hey, ladies. How are y'all doing this morning? We are doing some interest rate busting today, and I know you've got some tactics from a lender perspective for us. Is that right? I think so. Um, <clears throat> I for I've been in this business a long time. Was in you know uh, back in the early two thousands when things were crazy, and and you know of course the late nineties and all, and it's um. <sighs> I don't know. I've I've seen the low, low lows, and I've seen some high stuff. And I think just the biggest thing that's going on right now, the shock is is the re- the pace that they're rising. Um, they're still not historically. They're not bad. Uh, they, and, and I know it sounds impossible that I'm saying that because it was just literally you know 12 months ago maybe that they were historically low. But if you step back and you look at the graph we're still in a moderate rate environment. They're not great, but they're not terrible either. Mm-hmm. So I, I think I think some perspective is due. I think it's the same type of thought process uh, when you're looking at a, a stock market crash with, you know, your money's disappearing and everything. The last thing you want to do is panic and start selling off your stuff because it's the long game. Same thing with your mortgage, just in the other way. When the rates are up, I know it's maybe unfortunate that's the time that you're needing or wanting to purchase, but understand it's not permanent. Uh, you're not going to, no matter what you do, statistically, you're not keeping this mortgage for 30 years. It's great to get a 30 year fix just in case, but trust me, um, I, I think I don't have hardcore, you know, definitive numbers, but. The average is five to seven years that somebody will keep any mortgage, no matter whether it's low or high rates. That's that's just one of the factors that go into the mathematical equation. So mm-hmm. anyway, my, my preaching before we get into, you know, the different tactics that you were asking about is just don't get too hung up right now. That's the interest rate is the only thing the media knows to harp on and so that's the only thing that as a consumer if you don't really dig into it or have a lot of knowledge of it that's the only thing you're exposed to information wise but there's a lot more that goes into it so yeah you know there are some different ways uh to look at things now and you just have to catch it at the right time now i'm a broker so i have several different lenders that i can go through uh you know to to get a a mortgage completed for you And it just depends on whatever day you go under contract. So when you have a property and you go under contract for a purchase, that's when you can lock your rate. And and you don't have to lock that day, but that's when you can. Okay. And then you have have to to go into contract before you lock your rate or can you lock it before? So here's what people don't understand. The, the rate is attached to the lock is attached to a property. So if you don't have a property, 
where you don't have a contract, then we don't have anything to attach it to. Now, you don't actually technically have to be under contract, but if I lock you on a property and then that property doesn't work, I mean, we would have to, you know, just back off of it and cancel the lock. So, Cameron, you cannot get locked to a pre-approval? Correct. Okay. Correct. Now, now, when you're doing construction and things like that, you still have a property. It can be a longer term lock, um, but it ha- it's attached to the property. Okay, got Not it. Not the so, person. So you can, if you've got a house in mind and you think you are most likely going to purchase that home, you can lock on the address before you go into contract. Is that correct? Technically, yes, you can. And for somebody like me, now, if you go to a bank or a lender that – that's the only company they represent or it's the only bank they represent, that's fairly dangerous because if the if it doesn't work out, then you know, or if if you can't get under contract in time, then you're actually your lock has a chance of expiring too early and then you have lock extensions. I, on the other hand, what we can do if we go under con if we lock with one company and for whatever reason things are delayed and we need to look at another company or if rates take a nice dip the next couple of days, we can always switch gears to a different company and lock you with them and take your business to them. Got it. Okay. So what are the strategies do you have for us? We're interest rate busting today on the Real Estate News Radio Show. Well, so obviously a lot of people have heard about ARMS. Um, I'm not a huge fan of arms, never have been. Uh, they were, you know, back in the 2000s, it was pretty attractive because you could get a point, uh, a point lower, maybe a point and a quarter lower just by going to a three or five year arm. And a lot of people did. And then there was a market correction and that's when a lot of people got into trouble. So it was kind of a perfect storm to get people in trouble. Uh, plus they were buying homes they couldn't afford anyway. Yeah. Uh, looking at some rates, you know, the, usually your rates on a Friday will extend through the weekend. Uh, so if I were going to lock someone today or even tomorrow, I would do it on Friday's rates. Uh, and the arm rates are, have basically no advantage over a 30 year fixed as of Friday on wow. a couple of the lenders that I'm looking at. Okay. Um, there are other times I have seen where you might be able to get about a half point better. Uh, it's to me in my mind, it's not enough of a difference that we're selling any of those right now. So I'm seeing um, uh, at a credit union, I checked yesterday, I'm seeing about a half a point on a seven-year arm. I did not check with the three and the five, I'm guessing. So and what we're talking about here, for those of you who aren't familiar with an arm mortgage, is the arm, all, all that means is you, you, you um, stick a mile post in the ground and you say, this interest rate is going to hold for three years or this interest rate is going to hold for five years or this interest rate is going to hold for seven years. Because mm-hmm. it's a, it's a, you know, you're locking it in for seven years, it's going to be a bit higher of a rate. I'm guessing that when you do the three-year arm, you're, you're actually getting a lower rate and the five-year arm would be the medium rate. Is that correct or something like that? That's correct. And there's even seven and ten-year arms. But when you start getting up to there, there's virtually no difference between a fix. You might as well go with a fix. Got it. Uh, Thirty-year fix, but yes, ARM is an acronym. It stands for Adjustable Rate Mortgage. So you're right; it's fixed for the number of years. If it's a three-year ARM, five-year ARM, seven-year ARM, it's fixed for that amount of time. And then there are limits, but the rate can adjust. Now, again, back in the back in the 2000s, when rates were actually going down and people were in some ARMs, some actually their rates went down for a period of time because they had locked at a higher time. But in this environment, you know, who knows what's going on in the next three to five years. But whatever the, the, the rate climate is at that time, your rate can adjust. But there are caps to it. So usually every year it can't go up more than a point. Some places, if it's in the contract, it might be two points. So if, if you locked at six and a half and in three years the rates were up, then your rate could go up at the max of a point to seven and a half. I thought the whole point so of an arm sense. for the period is that it stays the same for three years, but you're saying it could still go up? 
No, 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 no I'm sorry if I, miss, if I misspoke. After that three-year period is up, there is a max that it can go up each year. So you only uh, have there, security there, for the time that you are locked in on that year period or those years period. Correct, correct. And it can so, go up you know, or down according to where we are on the rates. Yeah, what's going correct, on in the market. Correct. But it can only go down so much or up so much. Uh, there's, It's like a stop loss in insurance. You know, right. there's only so much it will let you uh, – gain or lose in that manner. So that's that's one thing you can always look at and ask about. Again, not a huge fan of it, so I don't mean to steer anybody against it, but it's um, the, the math just doesn't really add up in my mind. Um, unless you just hit it just right, and for some reason banks, I have not seen them pricing arms really attractively in this go round. So Well, it's because is, it's just uh, happening, I'm sure, and – you know, it's all about you and your and, and who you are as individuals, rather than uh, and attaching that to the strategy. So, for example, you might be, um, a, you know, you might be a single parent, and you might have to live in a certain place because your kids are still at school. Well, if your kids are out of school in three years, and you don't really want to be in the house you're in anyway, and you want to move somewhere else once your kids are out of school. That three-year arm might be perfect. It might be attractive, yes. So, or, I think everyone needs to have an educated plan on what they anticipate happening. But you also have to understand life doesn't always go according to plan. Of course. Right, right but then you can always yeah. refinance. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you Absolutely. are locked in at a lower rate for a three-year period, you can always refinance or, you know, whatever. That's even on a 30-year fixed. Mm-hmm. You know, if the rates yeah, that's if, an important point. If that you, you buy high, up. yeah. If you buy high, or when I first bought my house, it was eight point seven five. Right, way back, Cam, way back. Yep, eight point seven eight point seven five. And and I was going to say this earlier. You know, the younger generation that are just now getting into their buying their first house or their second house, they haven't experienced this interest rate. Correct. As we said with Randy, I don't know, a couple months back. What was your first house, Randy? What uh, was your interest rate? It wasn't the first house. It was, uh, but the interest rate on the mortgage was 14%. 14. <laughs> Mine was 8, 7, and I thought I was going to die. You know, but I lived there and I did it, and they had a thing called seasoned. Once you seasoned it, I had no credit at that time, y'all. I just want you to know that. Um, once they seasoned it, they refinanced it for me. So we had, you know, Cam, you know how to work with people like that, don't you? Mm hmm. Yeah. That's what I'm back in the 90s. We were taking folks. You know that maybe we're at nine and a half, ten percent, and refinancing them to you know seven point nine, paying off all their debt. You know, I mean, it was a it was a lovely time for refinances. I just don't want people to be scared. You know, everybody's scared. Oh my gosh, the interest rates are going up. Well, you know what? You might get more house for for your money. It might have a little higher interest rate for a couple of years. So the and, and so a couple of things that you brought up there. Let, let's say you are in a thirty year fix, or you're in a three year arm, or whatever. And, and you go ahead and you buy the home, even in year number one or two, that maybe we have an adjustment and rates really kind of bottom out or just kind of take a real deep dive. And you can get, you know, three quarters of a point, a point, point and a half lower. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait till the end of that three-year period. You can go ahead and refinance or the 30-year fix. You can improve your position. You get back in touch with your mortgage lender have them run the numbers, make sure the value's still there, everything's still good, yep. and then you just it's it's basically you go into another transaction, but you don't have to worry about all the purchasing, you know, moving stuff around. It's just a matter of getting your documents together and recalculating the numbers, getting you a lower interest rate and start stepping you down. And you can do that multiple times. It's not just once that you have to you're kept to doing it. You know what else I found interesting, Cam, on my thirty year note? Um, I kept my payment the same because I, I could pay it. I was doing it. Mm-hmm. Lowered the mm-hmm. interest rate and took the years off the life of the loan. I went from a 32. Oh, the, I went through a 30 to a 20, I believe it was. Same payment. And there's lots of times, let's say, for instance, you're in a home and you stay there for, you know, seven years, eight years. You're making more money. That payment is super affordable for you. Rates go down a little bit. And maybe we look at maybe you've got 23 years left. We run the numbers on a 15-year, and maybe it bumps your payment up, you know, $300 a month, but yet you're cutting 
eight years off of your mortgage, Should that's you. another great option to look at at that time. There's so many options. You're correct. So there's one other thing I want to run by you guys that maybe, uh, maybe you've heard of, maybe you've not, but it's called a 2-1 buy-down. Mm-hmm. Now, that's another option that we can look at, and that this is more of a um, strategy if you're having trouble drawing buyers to your home or you really want to throw an incentive in there because seller paid concessions can go towards paying closing costs and it is the seller contributing to the transaction on the buyer's behalf to pay some of their closing costs. We can actually take seller concessions and buy the rate down. So let's say for instance, just to use round numbers, let's say the buyer qualifies for 7% right now. If we have enough in there of concessions from the seller, we can actually the first year start that buyer off at a 5% interest rate. Wow. Then in year number two, they would have a 6% interest rate. And by year number three, it would fully mature to the 7% and then it would be level from there on out. So essentially, to make your house more attractive as a seller, you can help make the buyer's payment a portion of it by buying their rate down in a 2-1 buy-down. And the important thing there, Cameron, is that so many of our sellers have a lot of equity in their homes. However, they want to sell at the peak, not wait for 7 to 10 years. So if you have a $600,000 home that you bought for 200000 15 years ago, and yes, those are real figures right now because homes have gone up so much. You have so mm-hmm. much equity in your home that even spending something like $15,000 with a full price offer... Um, to buy down the rate would could be very attractive to the buyer. And we have a number of our sellers doing that, where they're offering ten to $15,000. We like to do it in an amount of money so the seller is you know, knowing how much they're going in for rather than buying down half a point or something where you really don't know how much it will cost. But putting that chunk of money in to say, here's $15,000 we'll do as a buyer concession. You can use it to you know, buy points down for your buyers and get their interest rate lower. You can use it for other things if you want to, but they've already got that in their mind that they're going to give up that 15000 Maybe somebody wants to tear the carpets out and put hardwood floors down, but now they've got a choice. Sort of feels like monopoly money at times with the way appreciation has gone. Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've got a question. This might get tricky. So you've got the 2-1 help. 2-1 buy down. down. Mm -hmm. Why is it called 2-1, Cameron? What does that mean? Well, because effectively what they're doing is they structure it to where the interest rate is a full two points lower in the first year. Then it's a point. It goes up a point in the second year and then levels out in year three. Okay. All right. So let's look at it that I'm a buyer and I go for a pre-approval or I go to get approved on a home, blah, blah, blah. And in order to get approved, I need to get discount points or buy down points where I can come to mm-hmm. closing with a certain amount of money and I can get a lower interest rate. Can you could explain mm-hmm. that to people? That's not the same thing as what you were just talking about. It is not. Um, and that's that, you're right. That's a that's something the two one buy down is something that has sort of developed as a, out of necessity that the the lending partners are making available. It was not available before the rate started kind of spiking. What you're talking about, what some people may know the term of discount points, okay? Uh, And it's not always in full points. I mean, when I look at a rate sheet and we're going over rates with somebody, I mean, it could be uh, a quarter of a point or it could be 0.32 of a point, you know, depending on where you want to be. The simple mathematical equation that I try to go over with every client. And again, every day my rate sheets are different. Sometimes you could buy the rate down a half point and it may it may cause your interest rate to go down significantly and it'd be a great deal. What you have to look at is how much am I spending to get the lower rate and then how much does that make my payment go down? Yeah. Is it's it a simple saving? division how long would it take me to recoup the money that I'm investing into this thing? So, in other words, let's say you could buy it down at full point. Maybe you're spending four grand on a $400,000 loan. And so $4,000, mm-hmm. and it makes your payment go down $100. Mm-hmm. 
it's going to take 40 months, just short of four years, to be able to recoup that $4,000 that you're spending. So in the, if you're only planning on being in the house for two to three years, that's not a smart move, right? But if this is kind of your forever home, you're going to pay it off. After that 40 months, that really may be good for you. On the other hand, if rates start to go down and you end up refinancing in three years, you really still just wasted some money on it. So it takes some careful consideration, some calculation, and just knowing, you know, or having an idea where you want to be in a certain amount of time. Well, you, you also may have some money as a bonus or some money that you, maybe you're buying an investment home, you know, some mm-hmm. m- money that you've got that you would otherwise be paying tax on this year or something like that. Or some money that you could use to buy it down and then give yourself Mm -hmm. the peace of mind. You know, I feel like Dave Ramsey here sometimes. It's like the snowball effect, which the snowball effect, most investment advisors would not tell you to pay off a lower rate interest, uh, lower rate credit card first. Dave Ramsey with the snowball effect absolutely suggests that because it gives you a peace of mind. You go for the, you know, the ones with the lowest balance first because you get it done and it gives you that peace of mind. So some people would be happier, even though it might cost you more in the long run. Who knows? Because who knows what you'll be doing in three years or if you'll be in that home. Even though it might cost you more in the long run, it might give you that peace of mind that your your payment is lower. Sure. I mean, some people, it just may make them feel better to... It, like in this environment, let's if they're if they're qualifying for seven and a quarter, but it really just feels better to say six point eight seven five or six nine nine, and yeah. it's more digestible. Yeah, and and, and it costs twelve hundred dollars to do it. Why not? And really, the, the the key thing here is as a seller right now, you are noticing if your home is listed, especially if you're not downtown somewhere with that perfect house with everything remodeled or it's brand new and it isn't priced absolutely right, you are noticing it doesn't sell tomorrow like it has been doing. What are you seeing in that, Heather? You know, it's it's you're often seeing that with people with their homes listed. The question was, um, what are you seeing with sellers right now that aren't downtown with that perfect home of everything shiny and, you know, remodeled, uh, brand new, whatever it is? Is it is it taking longer Houses are definitely sitting just a little bit longer, um, not too much. I see a lot of fear out of both sides, sellers and buyers right now. Buyers on the side of interest rates, sellers on the side of, is anybody going to look at my home? Um, really because of interest rates, too, right, because right, of what's happening. Right, and we have a lady right now that um, finally decided to list, very hesitant, Um Two showings today. Two showings today. In Zaconia. Super excited. I'm so excited. She has for been her. texting me back and forth, but she definitely um, is excited that she made the decision to go ahead. She's been debating this since um, June. Cute little home. But anyhow, but interest rates were, you know, a concern of hers as a buyer after she sells. Absolutely. So, you know, as a seller, then you flip into the buyer role. So now you've got double stress. Well, the nice thing there is that if you're thinking about selling now and then buying something, you're saying, yeah, I'm I'm making all this equity on my home. However, I've got to buy something else. Well, here's a situation that we're doing on a few of ours right now. You sell your house and you rent it back. So let's talk about this one in particular. We've got one in Zaconia, for example, 842 Mountain View. Just look that up at mountainhomehunt.com. It is adorable. It's three bedrooms, two baths. It's almost two. like a little cabin. It is like a little cabin. With cab- lake rights. It is like a little cabin. Three beds, two baths, 0.6 acres. So you, And it's surrounded by trees. It's very private. You've got a fenced-in yard. It's an absolutely adorable house. Most of it's been all remodeled. And um, it's, it's, you know, it's five minutes to historic Flat Rock. It's, it's close to all the restaurants, conveniences. 15 minutes from Traveler's Rest in South Carolina. A lot of people like to be um, on the coast. There's a great restaurant there called um, Restaurant 17, which is fantastic. (laughs) You know what was really neat about that property when we were standing there talking to the homeowner? She was telling us about how easy it was to get to Asheville or to Greenville. And a lot of people that live in Asheville love to go to Greenville, to downtown Greenville. True. Because it's just a different whole environment. So you can go to Asheville. 
and have that environment, or you can turn around and go to Greenville, same distance. So 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah it's just fifth. perfect. It's beautiful. Zirconia. I lived in Zirconia for a year. You did? And it's at exit three, which means it is three miles from the North Carolina, South Carolina border. It's just a great place to live. It really is. It really is. And you've you got a fully fenced in yard here, uh, new windows. I mean, it's just. I was, was going to say, everything's house. been like updated. Yeah. Uh, it seems like since, what, 2016, roof, gutters. Everything you have to read about it. All those, all that's in the description. So Mountain Home Hunt, mountainhomehunt dot com. Just go eight forty two Mountain View. You can see that there. The reason I mentioned that one is because this is the strategy we're using here. The homeowner has small children and would like to stay in the home a little bit longer. So we're gonna we're gonna kind of buy another thirty days on the end. Now look at this for a timeline for a minute. So here we are in October. And she was thinking, oh, I'm not going to list now because I really want all this to flow into the new year. So um, as we flow into the new year, if we're at October 1 now, let's say it takes us two weeks to get a contract. We are mid-October. Once mid-October comes around, what are we looking at, Cameron? Around six weeks right now to close? Uh, It shouldn't take six weeks, no. I mean, uh, capacity is up even though there's been some staffing layoffs due to you know down business but yeah we, we're still looking at 30 days as long as we don't have any title or appraisal issues okay so we're, we're doing 30 to 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 60 days let's, let's say four say. to six weeks so 45 mm-hmm. yeah, yeah four, four to, to six, six weeks. weeks so we're doing four to six weeks so let's err uh, on the side of being conservative so that we have a little more time to get it under contract because things are taking a little bit longer now so we're now at six weeks so we're mid-november once we get to mid-November, if we buy you 30 days, we're at mid-December. You probably don't want to be there. You probably want to be at 60, day, 60 days, which takes you mid-January before you need to move out. What normally happens is that the seller will pay a rental amount that is negotiable through the contract. So she'll get to stay in there through mid-January, which could be absolutely perfect. Now, in come mid-January, this is where you have to tie all these things together. So, um, you know, Cameron has to take his crystal ball and look at where he thinks interest rates might be. Or we can find a home now. How long can you lock the rates in for, Cameron? Well, I mean, you can lock in for six months if you want to, but okay. there's, a, there's a price to doing that. You know, it's not free. How much does it cost? That. Well, I mean, it's, it's not like a fixed cost. It's just you will pay a higher, you will have a higher attachment to the rate because it's riskier for the bank to hang themselves out there that long. Got it. So we can do... Especially when it's a higher interest environment, right? Because we're expecting interest rates to go up. People are talking about them being in the eights next year. Are you seeing seeing that discussion? I I think it's it's highly possible. As a matter of fact, I really, at the beginning of the year, the way things were going, I thought we would already be there. So I'm, I'm actually a little bit pleased that we're not there yet. Yeah, absolutely. So buy it now, in other words. (laughs) <laughs> However, mm-hmm. selling it now, here's the difference. Selling it now, most likely none of us have a crystal ball, obviously. But selling it now gets you out at the peak and gets you the most equity out of your home. You get to stay there. You get to put money in your pocket within, it could be 30 days, as Cameron can turn it around so quickly. You've got that money in 30 days. You're buying, so you can buy something else. However, be able to stay in your current home. So you only have to move once. Now, if you're buying in 30 days or 60 days, the chances of of home prices being lower is extremely likely because it's getting seasoned right now. People are starting to realize they're sitting back. A lot of buyers are starting to realize a lot more homes are coming on the market. And, you know, people have been waiting. They've been procrastinating to sell. Like, oh, I think they're going to go even higher. I think they're going to go even higher. A lot of people, you know, miss that window. Don't miss that window. List it now. So a lot of buyers are seeing those homes come on the market. They're also seeing a lot of price reductions for a lot of homes that have been sitting for a long time. So my prediction would be that in 30 or 60 days that that seller is going to be able to buy a home with a big price reduction, right? So you're already taking advantage of those lower prices. Now, the only downside from Cameron's perspective is that the interest rate might go up a little bit. Could that be right? Possible. Mm-hmm. But you date the interest rate and marry the house, correct? 
That's right. We can get you refied when you need to get refied. However, when you look at the extra equity you could be getting out of your home, I'm going to do a scale that shows what this looks like. Five to seven years, uh, seven to 11 years before it peaks again, right? So if a home is depreciating in value, I got you, Heather. I'm going to get to you in a second. If a home is depreciating in value, then every week, every two weeks, every month, it's depreciating in value. It's probably depreciating a whole lot more than the money you're paying on that interest rate. Think about it that way. We went down over 30% before. That's kind of scary, isn't it, Heather? I just had a question. So when you do the seller possession after close, we have different scenarios going on right now. We have one that closed within the 30 days with the seller possession after close. We had one that pushed out the closing until the seller actually wanted to vacate. They just moved the closing. In that kind of scenario, if they push out the closing, they're still locked into the interest rate they went into under contract. Or you talking about the buyer or the seller of that home? I'm talking about the buyer on the interest rate side. So a, ho- a buyer closes buys- in 30 days under they go into contract in 30 days. Okay. Okay. And they in 30. What's that mean? They, so they're looking at the home. They see the home. They put an offer in and they go into contract. Right. And they and close. What? Okay. They, they go they to close closing. in 30 days. Right. Okay. So they have that interest rate. And then we have the other one. Is the seller still staying in the home? Yes. Okay. All right. And and they rent, do the rent back. Yes. Okay. Then the other one, the seller or the buyer agreed to close. Instead of giving them seller possession after close, they agreed to extend the closing date a whole nother 60 like, days. Yeah. That, well, Does so that change? It's a very bad idea for the seller. Here's why. Because that buyer could pull out if they haven't closed yet. But did it change the buyer's interest rates, my question? Or were they locked in? That's for Cameron. That's why I got Cameron. I am I'm having a little trouble following Help him, that scenario. I'm sorry. I don't So the buy, it, it, the buyer it, it, buys a house. So so John John buys a house. Uh-huh. Right? So John is the purchaser. John buys the house and the seller has seller possession after closing. However, they're not are they closing or not closing? They decided instead of giving seller possession, they would extend the closing date. So they're closing in 60 days. So John buys a house and they're closing in 60 days. They're not giving seller possession. They're asking the seller to get out. Let's do 90 days. Okay. Versus. Never mind the the verses because we know the verses, right? We know you can lock in and everything else. So the 90 days. So John now is buying a house and he's closing in 90 days because the seller wants to stay there for 90 days. What does John do in terms of locking his interest rate? Because very likely they're likely to go higher. So what would John do right now to lock it in, and how much more is it going to cost him, I guess, is, is the question. Yeah, I just want to there, yeah, there again, so uh, in a similar scenario, I'll have someone that is having a home built. It's almost being finished uh, about 60 days. When you're dealing with a broker like myself that has different lenders, I can lock right I could lock that client for 90 days to be safe, to kind of hedge the market, all right? Just in case they do keep going up, we would have that locked for 90 days. But in the event, because it's only going to take me 30 days to really get closed, within that 30-day window of when he really wants to close, if rates have taken a nosedive, even temporarily, I can jump in and lock him in for 30 days or 45 days or whatever with a different company and then just send his business there instead. Okay, but what you mentioned before is that that 90-day lock is going to cost you a higher interest rate because the company that's making the loan is going to hedge their bets. Is that correct? Correct. On that day, to lock someone for 90 days versus 30 days, there's a price to pay for that. Not a fixed price, but it's it's whatever it is worth their risk to hang themselves out there for an extra 60 days. Um, But what I'm saying is if we could go ahead and stick a pin in that rate and say, yep, if, if this is the best that it's going to be, we've got you locked in there. If rates continue to go up over that 90 days, you'll be grateful that you did and we stay there. But if rates tumble, we lock you in somewhere else and you can take advantage of that and we dismiss the 90-day lock. That's kind of interesting. So what you could do with seller possession, which is a big thing right now. Uh, you know what? It should be a big thing always because 
Most often, sellers need money in their pocket. This domino effect of you sell your house, you buy a house, you know, the house you buy, those sellers have to move somewhere else. It's this huge line of dominoes and one little thing goes wrong and we know that, you know, closings get delayed and things like that. It can be an absolute nightmare. U- utilities get turned off too early because the sellers didn't realize they should wait a day or two, which might cost them $20, you know, in, a, in the electric bill or something. Where And you move in and you can't get them turned off yet because somebody put the date on a Saturday or the water board can't come out or whatever it is. It's It's so stressful in those events that if you as a seller can even get a week or two after closing, it's so good. So I think, you know, just as a perspective for everybody, if the seller can have more time after closing, it's a really great space for everybody. Because remember that buyer most likely is a seller too, and they'd be getting the same thing. However, we've got to make interest rates work like that with lots. So if it is a buyer's market, which we are switching to, we're not there yet because of the lack of inventory. However, if it's a buyer's market and it is if you're further out, you know, and you don't have a remodeled house and nothing's been done. It's already a buyer's market. By the way, it's probably been that quite a while. Um, you know, it's it's all in pockets of where you're at. However, Cameron, what I'm thinking here is the seller could also take that 15000 or 10000 or whatever we agree when they've got all that equity right now and put it towards locking the buyer's rate. Is that right? In the 2-1 buy-down, is that what you're talking about? Either of them, the 2-1 buy-down or helping them lock in the rate. So if they want 90 days in the house, as a buyer, I'd be thinking to to heck with that because it's going to cost me more on my interest rate because they're staying in the house because they're staying in the house for 90 days. So to heck with that. However, if the seller says out of their ten or $15,000 or whatever we agree in the ec- all that equity they've got right now because the house is worth so much right now, then couldn't the seller use some of those um, seller can set some of the money they're giving to the buyer? Let's not use fancy terms to actually help them uh, get do the extra to get that lock. Oh, absolutely. Okay, yeah, absolutely. It, we, we, the, the the bank, the lenders do not care where the money is coming from. To the extra money needed to extend the for okay. extended rate lock, as long as it's there at the end, that's all they care about. It, it sounds like to me, as someone that is, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm new anymore, but someone that has been through a seller possession, because that's what I did on my home. Mm-hmm. I bought, I leased my home, I rented my home back for a thousand dollars for the buyer. thirty days yeah. from the buyer after close. Mm-hmm. It seems to me that the best thing as a seller or as a buyer, financially speaking, is to actually go ahead and close mm-hmm. at the rate that you're given. Yes. Then come up with an agreement with the seller to stay, you know, to rent it back. Yes. I mean, it just seems like you're making you're your money back. Rate. You're getting something. Yeah. Even if you're having to stay renting where you are or whatever, it just seems like it's better than trying to buy yeah. and lock in at a cost, as Cameron keeps saying. You know, you mm-hmm. there's a price to pay. It's so funny. I think, you know, and I come back to Dave Ramsey again. I think that so often people get tied up in 2000, 7000 here, 2000 there. And it's all money. Those That money is very important. But you've got to look at the bigger picture. You know, as a seller, you're getting a massive amount of equity out of your home right now, especially if you're in your 60s and up, I would say. Because 7 to 11 years is a much longer time. If you're younger, so if you're 20 and listening right now or 30 and listening right now or even 40 and listening right now, you've got a longer time to recover. It's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing with um, or or a buyer for that matter. It's the same thing with the market. You know, you you don't pull out your 401k because the markets have crashed right now. That would be stupid for most people. So you've really got to look at what's your life plan. Do things change? Absolutely. But if, if, you don't, if you don't have a goal in mind, you're definitely not hitting it. Well, for me, with my children, 26, 23, I'm advising them to really start looking to buy right now. Yeah. With the higher interest rates. Yes, mm-hmm. I know, which sounds kind of wacky. Why? Why would you be advising your kids to do that? Because they can refinance. Well, what about the because rents get they're it. paying? Oh, yeah, exactly. They're paying somebody else's mortgage right now. That's exactly the way we look at it. Um, I am paying rent right now. I look but at 26 <laughs> years of age, right, 26. Here you are at 26. If you can get um, a little teeny tiny home, 
that needs fixing up. It, it ain't going to be your forever home, probably. That's okay. Get on that equity ladder because you can take your time and fix it up. Buy the smallest you can, would be my advice, and get a 15-year mortgage. Is it, you know, is it going to cost you more? Absolutely. But buy a smaller place. Don't go, oh, I've got to, you know, I've got to live high on the hog and live outside of my means. You're 26 years old, for goodness sake. You've got plenty of time to do that. Buy the smallest place you can afford. Just get on the ladder and do that 15-year mortgage. Let's say you're 25 because the math is easier. Imagine at 40 years old, you're going you're gonna to own that free and clear. I've got to give a shout out real quick. Mm-hmm. Claudia, hey, I see that you're escaping from Florida right now. She's one of our clients. Claudia, yeah, we, we love that you're escaping. And she, she's just like, good morning. I Aww. think about y'all all the time listening to you while fleeing. You're amazing. And she can relate to the gray hair. <laughs> we love you. Claudia, they can do. It's it's so amazing. You know, so I don't know if you started out as a brunette. I'm, I'm not going to give her away. Um, it, you know, it's, it's so great. If you started out as a brunette, which she did. Don't, don't tell it. Well, we're not giving a last name. That's all right. She started out as a brunette. It's so easy to go blonde now. You know, she's still if you want to. Brunette. She is still brunette. Yes. Yeah. But she, you know, the, we had the, such a good time that day with you. We need to get together. When you're brunette, speaking, all the ladies listening now. We have a lot of ladies listening too. If you're brunette and, and you're like half gray already, now you can finally go blonde because it ain't fun when you're brunette trying to go blonde. Now you can. You got all those free highlights. Remember all those hundreds of dollars you used to pay for highlights? Now you got free ones. Yeah. It's much easier. What's good is when you color it and the gray's just kind of in there and you right. get your natural highlights from when they're putting right. color on your hair. Well, brunette's <laughs> much harder. When, when you're white with brunette, it's much harder because those, those grays come through and make you all look white. The guys are like, eh, whatever, you just go gray naturally. And tell your grandmother we said hello. Boys get to do that. Yeah, really. Say hello to, to grandma. Thank goodness we have so many clients escaping Florida right now. Many of them are coming here. I think they're coming here because they think, oh, it's in the mountains. So, you know, it's in the mountains and therefore uh, we must be high and we must be out of the rain. Sometimes we kept the rain. I'm down. sorry I went down a rabbit hole, but I had to say hey to her. No, it's not a rabbit hole. That's, mm. that's our lovely client. I know. I haven't got to talk to her in a while. So what have we got for trivia, Heather? I don't have any. You took it from me. And then we got on this with Cameron. <laughs> that is not fair. You cannot blindside me like that. And Cameron, then take you it got from any me. trivia for us today? Yeah, Cameron, help me out. <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. this is what she does. Like, you come in with something, and then she'll just, like, bust it out in the beginning, and then you're like. How about, how about them blonde highlights, Cameron? Yeah, don't you have anything? I, I, I was mean, sitting here thinking, y'all had me with interest rates, and you just really lost me on the hair thing. <laughs> I mean, come on. Like, go over there but to your say- Pictionary and start drawing us a picture on the radio and let us try to guess what it is. Oh, congratulations to Cameron, by the way, because I hear something, Randy saw something on Facebook. Are we right, Cameron? What just happened? Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. I think you need to uh, give a shout out. Yes, my uh, my brand new beautiful fiance. Woohoo! Is, uh, Do we have music for that? What's her name? Come on. Rebecca. Rebecca. Rebecca, yeah. congratulations. Best no. wishes, Rebecca. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you, Cameron. guys. Yes. Thank you guys so much. Yep. It's a big step for both of us, and we're we're ready for it. He's a very, very lucky man. Do we have Rebecca. a date? Oh, no, no, no. Well, I, Why does everybody do that? Everybody gets engaged, and nobody ever has a date. You're like the fifth person that I've asked. No, this. that's the guy. The girl always has a date. Rebecca, what's the date? Call us, please. Help us bell Cameron out. Hurry, hurry. It's 800-570-9962, Rebecca. 800-570-9962. I think we should get Just hurry up, hurry up. With Cameron. Is she there with you today, And we'd like to know the colors that you're going to use, the flowers, the location. Because if you're like most women, you have it figured out. My daughter's already got the ring and everything figured out. He better figure out what that is from her, by the way. Hey, Cameron, I think you might need a new house. I e well yeah we're thinking he about said, that I too. E, 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 <laughs> okay, um, let's go to trivia for let's children. Back, let's see if we can find oh, anything. Oh, let's go back to the blonde highlights now. Oh, you, uh, yeah, something. Did oh, you no. find something, Randy? No. Just, what are you curious about blonde highlights? Would you like us to color your hair and see what happens? To save Cameron from this. Uh, uh, did we? We've done what, how many colors in a rainbow? Yeah, we've done that one. 
I, I think that might be a little too easy, frankly. What else have you got it? for us, Cameron, in terms of uh, anything we can do for interest rate busting? Well, listen, I, I'm, I started out this way and I want to end it this way. If you are, if you're listening to this thing, you're like, oh my God, you, you know, your mind is just kind of melting over these different things. Please don't focus on the interest rates. They are higher now than they have been. They're probably lower than they will be in the near future, but it will come back down. The interest rate right now I, I, it is considered a negative. I get that. But it is subject to change and will change, just like just like your investments in the stock market. They're not doing great right now. It doesn't mean you take them all out and you you know you bury it in the backyard. You play the long game. You leave it in there. You get into a home now. Appreciation is the major factor, the mathematical factor with real estate. Dang it's right. Not always guaranteed. It's not always guaranteed to go up, but over. A long period of time, it will. People are still coming here. It's a desirable place to be. Get in, let your appreciation start ticking, and when rates fall, and they will, it may not be this year, it may not be next year, but they will take advantage of it, restructure it, and move on. Do not let that be a determining factor in making you sit on the sideline. What would you say to the people who are renting right now who say, I'm going to give it a year or two because I think interest rates are going to come down. So the um, a, a fairly low rent here would be $2,000 a month. You've got all the people who haven't rented in 30 years listening. Yes, that is real. Go look at the rents out there. It's at least 2000 If you want a three-bedroom, two-bath, you know, you're going to be paying more than that. So at least, let's just say 2000 for the easy math. You know, I like easy math. In a year's time, you've spent $24 thousand dollars paying somebody else's mortgage so the way i always look at it is twenty four thousand dollars gives you a nice cushion to even if your home price comes down a little bit or you're paying a higher interest rate if you're waiting out two years that's forty eight thousand dollars that's a big old cushion you know and it's not right. all about money it's about you're in a place that you can renovate you can add equity to you can finish out the basement over time whatever it is you know well let me let me compound that real quickly and i've said this to different uh, networking groups that i'm a part of um that exact same let's say we're going to give it a year we're going to continue to rent and you're paying two thousand dollars you're right so you're going to pay twenty four thousand dollars over the next year to your landlord that's money that's gone the same four hundred thousand dollar house that you would like right now Likely next year could be anywhere, let's say 430000 So now you've lost 24000 and you're paying an extra 30000 for the exact same house that you could have gotten the year before. You effectively are out $54,000 well, in one year. Let's be realistic, though, because I think that in a year, even though they're forecasting different things, I think house prices are going to come down a little bit. Let's take that same four hundred and let's say it's now three eighty. You still have money in your pocket, but not only that, you're on the equity ladder. You've started to pay down the principal. You can remodel that home however you want to, even if it's a tiny little condo. You've got you can do what you want to it, whereas if you're renting, you can't, obviously. Right. Even if prices come down, it's still better. So yes, if they go up even a little bit. You know, you, you, you've you definitely lost out. But even if they come down, that's what I meant by a cushion. You've got 24000 for one year. You've got 48000 for two years. Oh, my gosh, you guys, thank you so much. Thank you, Cameron. Heather wants the last word thank in the last you. 10 seconds. I really seconds. did. I was hoping Randy was listening because I had the question for you in which country was golf first played? Scotland, Germany, United States, or Alaska? Randy, tell we me at it, home. Yeah. We got it last. Next next time around. See you next week. <laughs> this has been the Plain English Real Estate Show with Rowena Patton. Visit Rowena and post your questions at RadioAsheville.com or call her at 828-210-1648.